students in this short video lecture i will tell you about two aspects of the blood vascular system first i will tell you what are portal veins and where they are found in our body second i will also tell you about the factors which are responsible for the venous return okay so now i move to the first slide where we start with the portal veins now the big question is that what are portal veins you must have seen that usually only one capillary plexus is present between artery and vein that means when the artery terminates in the uh, terminal arterioles meta arterioles then it breaks up into the capillary plexus and capillary plexus on the other end forms what is called as venules many venules unite to form a small vein then large vein and ultimately the venous blood drains into the heart okay so this is the usual i think uh, i should say that it is the usual thing that there is one capillary plexus between an artery and vein okay so it is an intervening important part of the blood vascular system between the artery and vein where the gaseous exchange and that of the exchange of substance they takes place which i have told you in the last video okay now but then uh, there are few places uh, in our body where after formation of the vein see here in this diagram i will just move my pointer see here this is an artery an artery this is say for example a meta arteriole which has broken into the capillary plexus this is the atrial end of the arterial okay this is an arterial end of the capillary plexus and this is in blue color it is the venous end of the cap and then a, a small venule is formed in which the capillary they pour their uh, blood okay this is the usual practice okay this is the usual now but in this condition a vein again breaks up into a second set of capillaries okay so it is not the artery which is breaking up into the capillary plexus here it is the vein which is again breaking up into an another uh, set of the capillaries and then this vein which is between the first set of capillary to the second capillary is called as portal vein i hope you have understood what are portal veins so portal veins are the veins which connect the two sets of the capillary plexus okay the first set with that of the second set and that vein is called as the portal vein okay now i will move to the next slide and we will see that what are these portal veins now portal veins are found at following sites in our body and these portal veins they serve very important function in our body and because of some special function these portal veins are formed that means the two sets of capillaries are formed one at the art uh, arterial end and another at the end of the vein that is at the end of the portal vein itself okay now these portal veins are found at the following site here number 1 between intestine and liver that is called as hepatic portal system please go on noting in your notebook okay this way you will uh, keep concentration on the lecture okay so it is between intestine and liver and where in intestine first capillary plexus is there it is in the villi okay as we will see just now in the diagram okay in the villi and second capillary plexus is present in the liver itself so this is called as hepatic portal system of vein okay hepatic portal which is the largest portal vein of the body okay now second place where you get the portal vein is in kidney okay and in kidney this uh, portal vein is called as the renal portal system this system is called as because it is present in the kidney hence the renal portal system because ren or uh, renal means kidney now 
Then the third place where we get the portal veins are between hypothalamus, which is the part of the brain situated just below the thalamus. So it is one plexus of these uh, veins, I mean say uh, capillaries is present in hypothalamus, then the portal vein is formed and then second plexus is present in the hypophysis cerebral that is anterior pituitary okay in the anterior pituitary now this plexus will be called as or this portal vein be called as our system of the portal vein between the hypothalamus and hypophysis cerebral will be called as hypothalamo hypophysial portal system hypothalamo hypophysial portal system and the last, the fourth place where we get the portal vein is in suprarenal gland itself. And this is called a suprarenal portal system. Okay. Suprarenal is sometimes also called as adrenal because it is located at the upper pole of the kidney. Okay. So these are the four different places. And now we will see all these four places, how this portal system uh, or portal vein or form and what are the plexus to which they connect okay now this is the first that is the hepatic portal system okay this is hepatic portal system here the first capillary plexus lies in the intestine okay and where in intestine in the villi okay you have seen that uh, in your lower classes that there are intestinal villi which contain lot of the blood vessels capillary uh, are there and this is the first set of the capillary from where they absorb the nutrients okay so all kind of nutrients and water are absorbed by this capillary plexus itself now this is the first set of the capillary then this capillary plexus throughout the length of the intestine they just come close to each other and form ultimately a single portal vein which is quite big when you will go to the abdomen then you will learn a lot about the portal vein so in short this portal vein is formed by the capillary plexus present in the intestine lot of plexus are there okay millions of plexus will be there in the because your intestine is very large okay many feet okay now this portal vein ultimately then will enter into the liver okay from intestine it will bring the blood and then it will enter into the liver where it will again break up into the second set of the capillary plexus so this capillary plexus which is the second set of the capillary plexus is formed here by the veins itself okay by the veins okay this was formed by the arteries that is meta arterioles or terminal arterioles first set here it is the venous plexus they are formed by the and again this venous plexus will drain the blood into the hepatic vein which will ultimately take the blood to the heart okay it will now here this plexus is here this is special arrangement of the portal vein is here because this plexus the first plexus as i say uh, said that it will bring the nutrients and water from the intestine and these nutrients are at present they are quite raw carbohydrate protein fat mineral salt water they will all will be brought by this portal vein where this uh, carbohydrate protein and fat will get metabolized they will break into the stable and more simpler uh, form of the food okay which can be utilized by our body okay so the purpose here is to bring the nutrients to a organ that is liver which is capable or which is i mean to say functioning as to break the food which was absorbed through the intestinal villi into simpler form so this is an important function of this portal system that is called as the hepatic portal system and but note that here the portal vein is a single vein okay portal vein right so after this first portal vein uh, of the body we go to the next portal vein now in this 
Uh, it is called as renal portal system. It is called as renal portal system. In your classes, lower classes, you have learned about the kidney and in the cortex of the kidney, you must have learned that there are glomerulus and glomerulus are nothing but the capillary duct. They are capillary and this is placed between the afferent and efferent arterioles. Okay, afferent and efferent arterioles. So, this is the first capillary plexus, okay, which is draining the blood into an another capillary plexus, which in cortex is called as peritubular capillaries. So, first capillary plexus was there, it is glomerulus itself, okay, and second is where, where there are the a peritubular plexus in cortex but the same vessel that is the efferent arteriole when it will come into the medullary part of the kidney or into the medulla of the kidney they will break up into a very peculiar type of the capillaries which are called as vasa recta they will not enter anastomos and they will not form the mass work or network but they are running parallel to each other very thin capillaries running parallel to each other and these are called as vasa but again this is the second set of capillary of course modified set but it is the set of capillary so in the kidney there are millions of the glomerulus and there are thus millions of the portal system, renal portal system, okay? And this portal vein ultimately drains the blood into the vein, okay? Between to the vein. Now, what is the significance of this portal venous system? Now, see, in the glomerulus, you must have learned that there is the ultrafiltrate takes place through the capillaries of glomerulus. Okay, blood is filtered and many constituent of the blood, they ultimately come into the Bowman's capsule and then it goes through the afferent, I mean to say through the, uh, the convoluted tubules, proximal convoluted tubules and then the loop of Hanley and distal convoluted tubules. When the loop of Hanley, they come into the pyramid of the medulla of the kidney where, where there is a presence of second set of capillary, what is called as vasa recta as I told you, there takes place an exchange between the convoluted tubules, okay, they still convoluted tubules and the vasa recta, they interchange, okay, loop of Henle, okay, between the loop of Henle and that of the vasa recta, lot of exchange takes place of the substance, for example, the those substances which are useful body for the body, they will be reabsorbed by this vasa recta from the loop of Henle, okay? And then this will be restored. Otherwise, the important constituent of uh, the body, they are not lost in the urine because of that. So, that function you will learn in great detail in your physiology, okay? But this is the important function of the renal portal system to preserve the, hmm, the I mean say, useful substance of the body, okay? That means here it helps to reabsorb essential constituent of glomerular filtrate back to the blood okay again it goes back into the blood which had come out from the blood at the glomerular filtration in the medulla it will be brought back to the blood next slide and here this is the third set of the uh, portal veins hypothalamus hypophysial portal system are also called as hypothalamo hypophysial portal system here the first set of the capillary is in the hypothalamus. This is hypothalamus, that is the lowest part of the uh, diencephalon, which you will learn later. Dian I'm sorry, I have used the word diencephalon. It is the part of the brain, okay, which is situated just below that of the thalamus and that's why it is called as hypothalamus. 
and hypothalamus is a part of the brain which contain the group of the neurons which act as the neurosecretory neuron that means though they are neuron but they secrete the hormones and some of the hormones are secreted by the group of the neurons in the hypothalamus and these hormones are absorbed by this first set of the capillary plexus which is present within the hypothalamus of the brain okay and then these hormones are carried through this vein through the infundibular stalk then this comes into the anterior pituitary gland where it breaks up the into an another set second set of the capillary plexus thus the veins which are coming in the i mean say coming through the infundibular stalk huh, these veins between the first set and the second set of capillary plexus they are called as portal veins okay there are only one portal vein i have shown there will be hundreds and thousands of portal vein coming from hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary gland okay to the anterior pituitary and since i told you that this is bringing the hormones secreted by the hypothalamus these hormones then they come out from the secondary set of the plexus and then they stimulate the cells which are present in the anterior pituitary there are various kind of cells okay that uh, cells acidophil basophils are there we secrete the different kind of the hormones from the anterior pituitary so those hormones which were secreted by the hypothalamus they will stimulate the secretion or the inhibition of the secretion from those acidophil and basophil for example growth hormone thyroid stimulating hormone adrenocorticotrophic hormone follicle stimulating hormone all these are secreted by the cells of anterior pituitary under the influence of the neurons which are situated in the hypothalamus okay into the heart so what is the function of this hypothalamo hypophysial portal system it controls that means the brain brain means hypothalamus here hypothalamus controls the secretion of the hormones from the anterior pituitary if the hormones are less their concentration is less in the blood then the, these cells will be stimulated and if concentration of this hormone is more in the blood then the these cells will be inhibited that means the their secretion will be inhibited or slowed down okay slowed down and this is under the influence of the hypothalamus hypo so this is an important link okay between the brain and a endocrine gland that is anterior pituitary which is playing an important role okay the control is here through the blood stream which is flowing between the two sets of capillary plexus thus it is a very important uh, portal system okay moving to the last i think yes this is the suprarenal portal system now since you may not be knowing the histology of the suprarenal gland let me tell you the suprarenal gland which is <coughs> sorry <coughs> sorry which is located i mean say above the kidneys i said that on the upper pole of the kidney a small gland is located called as adrenal or suprarenal and if you cut a suprarenal gland it has a cortex part and the central part is the medulla okay peripheral part is cortex and central part is medulla now here the artery which goes into the capsule first it forms a plexus either in the form of a uh, this uh, uh, retic or in say in form of a network of the capillaries okay which is formed here or it is in the form of sinusoid when i was teaching you the capillary i said you the third form of the capillary is also called as sinusoid either it is in the form of the sinusoid or the capillary plexus so whatsoever capillary plexus or sinusoids are present in the cortex these are considered as the first set of the capillary plexus first set of the capillary plexus now from this first set of the capillary plexus veins will form 
and these are here of course not long veins are shown where at the junction of the cortex and medulla these veins are actually the portal veins very short in length and when the medulla comes they again break up into the second set of the capillary plexus and this second set of capillary plexus then ultimately drains into the medullary veins okay which are large and present in the center of the medulla now here the blood starts flowing from the surface of the gland in the capsule where arteries are there then they it passes through the cells which are present in the cortex and lot many cells are present in the cortex of the adrenal gland or suprarenal gland and and these are arranged in three different zones zona glomerulosa fasciculata reticularis which secretes many hormones okay which for example one important i will tell you i don't want to confuse you at this level it is the cortisone okay okay you must have heard about the cortisone injection or the tablets uh, which are sometimes said to be the life saving also okay these many other hormones they are also secreted and then this uh, along with these hormones there are some chemicals which comes into this venous plexus and then these chemicals which goes into the medulla these chemicals they act on to the cells of the medulla so that they can synthesize their own hormones and the hormones which are synthesized in medulla they are the neurotransmitters okay and they are adrenaline and the noradrenaline okay norepinephrine or epinephrine okay which are secreted so it brings some chemicals from cortex to medulla which are necessary for secretion of medullary harm that is the important purpose otherwise how these chemicals would have come from cortex to that of the medulla so that is the reason why there is the supra renal portal system okay now i move to the next slide and i think we have now finish with the portal system of the veins in our body now we come to a second com i mean say aspect of the blood vascular system where uh, we will learn about the factors which are responsible for venous return you know that the veins they return the blood back to the heart from where this blood was coming through arteries arteries uh, the blood was flowing with the speed because there was a blood pressure was there because which was generated by the systole or contraction of the ventricles and this blood was flowing rapidly through the arteries okay then came uh, comes the capillaries which are network and till it reaches to the capillaries the blood pressure diminishes okay significantly hardly it must be one tenth or less than the what was uh, at the arterial end i mean say at the large arteries hmm? so you know that the systolic blood pressure is 120 okay is a big blood pressure so what were the factors responsible for the blood flow in an artery it was the blood pressure which was generated because of the systole or the ventricular contraction but when the blood comes and collect on the other end of the capillary plexus that is the venules and small veins and then they form the large veins by this time this pressure is almost negligible almost negligible that means hardly any pressure remains in the veins okay blood pressure okay which was 120 by 80 that hardly any blood pressure remains in veins then veins are present at various places in our body that means it is present in the upper limb it is present in the trunk and it is present in the lower limbs veins are also present in head and neck okay and upper trunk but then this venous return to the heart is through the from the upper part of the body is through the i mean say towards the gravitational direction towards the uh, there is no need for any force for the blood to come to the heart 
but the blood which is coming from the lower part of the or lower half of the body say for example from upper limb which are hanging by the side of the trunk or the trunk or especially from lower limb okay it, it has to come in the anti gravity direction okay so how this blood is ascending it is climbing up to the heart which must be around 3 to 4 feet at least from the soul okay located above so how how this blood is reaching to the heart that is uh, the question okay and how then it reaches to the heart from in anti gravity direction uh, there are some factors which are responsible for this venous return against the end gravity direction in the anti-gravity direction and we will learn those factors now so let us see what are those factors which helps the venous return number one is venous valve see here this is first factor which is most important is the venous valve and all those valves which carry the blood in anti-gravity direction there are always venous valves are present see suppose it is a vein and you can see here are the valves are present which are uh, capable for the flow of the blood in only one direction when the blood is pushed okay above the way on uh, valves then it cannot go back it cannot go back okay why because the valves are there and it will not allow huh? it has only one way traffic not the two way right so the venous valves play a very important role in the ways which have to uh, carry the blood in anti-gravity direction right. okay then there is a second factor it is called as musculovenous pump mechanism okay and this mechanism i have told you when i was teaching you the deep fascia because deep fascia plays a very important role in this musculovenous pump mechanism see here now this will this diagram will explain you what is the mechanism of the musculovenous pump the on one side say for example it is bone is here it is a longitudinal section say for of the leg muscles okay so these are say for example very simplified diagram okay and this uh, color blue color structure here on the surface of this diagram is what it is the deep fascia which imagine that it completely surrounds the limbs okay upper limb and lower limb very tightly like a sleeve okay and you know what is the characteristic of the fascia this is an inelastic tough membrane okay like a thick paper okay can you stretch the paper no you cannot stretch because it is also in in the similar way this tough, tough membrane is the deep fascia which covers it and what lies deep to deep fascia it is the muscles and bone of the limbs they lie deep to the deep fascia and through the group of the muscle and sometime through the substance of the muscle which is very rare but then through the groups of the muscle these veins they travel okay the veins they travel and when the, the, when they travel okay the blood is flowing through it in anti gravity and there is presence of valves in these veins and when this muscle contracts okay what it will do it will try to swell because i told you when i was teaching the general anatomy of the muscle a muscle belly can contract up to 40 percent of its original land suppose a muscle is of 10 centimeter belly not tender if belly is of 10 centimeter when it will contract its length will be only 6 centimeters okay so 40 percent reduction is there and this reduction where it will go it will swell up but swelling because this is surrounded by the deep fascia the deep fascia cannot stretch so there will be a little swelling or seen belly a muscle belly can be seen but then this muscle belly we just exert its pressure all around it exert its pressure onto the bone it exerts its pressure onto the deep fascia and but maximum exertion of its force will be on the veins because it is elastic it is collapsible bone and deep fascia they are not collapsible they are not elastic right so the vein will be compressed because of the contraction of the muscle and thus the blood column will ascend up 
Why it will ascend up? Because when you will squeeze, naturally it is having unidirectional flow because of the presence of valves. So it will go only in anti-gravity direction, means towards the heart, towards the heart. Now suppose in that lecture I must have told you if cut the if you cut the deep fascia longitudinally, then that effect will be gone. That means uh, the compression force to the muscle will not be there because then the swelling of the muscle will uh, bulge out through that cut into the deep fascia. So this is an important factors in the venous drainage okay important factors in the venous drainage of this right and that's why uh, when you are sitting for long time at one place say in the over i mean say in the flights which are i mean to say going to the some other country where you have to sit for hours together hmm, it is advisable that you should get up and then walk okay in the plane itself right so that your muscles are uh, contracting and pushing the blood, uh, blood into. You must have noticed even when a car journey of prolonged hours, your feet, they swell up. This is due to the poor venous drainage. Okay. So, uh, the muscular contraction is necessary in the prolonged journey. Okay. Prolonged for the, uh, poor, I mean say, efficient venous drainage. Right. We go to the and other factors, okay, there are some more factors which are helpful in the venous return. Now, third factor which is helpful in the uh, venous return is the generation of the negative pressure in thorax, okay. You must have learned, I think, in your lower classes too, that when you take a deep breath, this deep breath is going to the lung not because of your uh, very much voluntary effort, okay automatically we are unaware of your respiration and it is going on okay now at the time of the inspiration that means when air is inhaled inside the lung the pleural cavities are there and they create the negative pressure they create and because of the negative pressure in the pleural cavity the lung sucks the air from outside okay sucks the air so this is an important factor for inhalation of the respiration process but this uh, negative pressure in thoracic cavity where heart is also situated okay this will uh, also create the suction that means what will create the suction no heart not the heart i don't mean to say that it is the heart which will create it is the pleural cavity through which I mean, say in the thoracic cavity, the superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, they are ultimately draining their blood. Okay, so a negative pressure will also suck the blood inside the heart, okay, in the right atrium of the heart, okay, in the right atrium. So, negative pressure of the thoracic cavity is third important factor which helps in the venous drainage against the gravity, okay. Now then, presence of vene comitantes, presence of vene comitantes, okay. These two diagrams are for vene comitantes, okay. And what is vene comitantes? Okay, you will see that the deep arteries, hmm, when they are uh, running inside the deep fascia also, okay, sometime in superficial fascia also, right. These arteries are surrounded by a plexus of vein. Here I have shown the three veins which are surrounding. And these veins, they are interconnected with each other all around this artery. There may be four veins also. Okay. So, this kind of the arrangement of the vein surrounding to an artery is called as veni comitantes. Okay. This is called as veni comitantes. Right. Then see the same in a longitudinal theoretical, I mean to say, uh, diagram. These are the two veins and centrally located was the artery and the blood flow in artery is in opposite direction, okay, as uh, it is in the opposite to the direction of the venous flow. In the uh, lower limb, say for example, or where it has to drain anti-gravity, in anti-gravity direction, see it? So, there are valves are present. Now, the artery shows the pulsation, okay. You have felt the pulsation of radial artery in your wrist, okay. So, this pulsation is expanding and contracting and when it is expanding, 
so when blood is flowing it is expanding when pulse come okay or when the beat comes in the ventricle then this pushes the veins which are present on either side forming the pluxes and because of this the blood column which is ascending uh, which is present into the veins it will be compressed okay and because of the compression uh, this blood cannot go in the reverse direction it will have to go into the uh, opposite direction because these valves are preventing the uh, back flow it is only allowing the flow of the venous blood in one direction which is in anti gravity direction so because there is a constant blood flow okay constant beating of the heart and then the artery is pulsating constantly and thus the venous return is also constant okay so this is an special arrangement of the veins hmm, which surrounds to the arteries okay which surround to the arteries that is called as the veni committent now this uh, fifth okay the fifth factor which is important for the venous retain is the push from the pool of the blood in capillaries and venules because there is a constant flow of the blood coming from the terminal arterioles to the capillaries that is the atrial end of the capillaries then it will push to the venous end of the capillaries and then vein there is a pool pool means collection how long it will collect and if there is or the space to go out then this blood will pushing to this see this is an another important factor for the venous return that is the pool of the blood in the uh, 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 arterial end of the uh, Uh, this blood vessels and venous uh, pluxes okay i mean to say uh, capillary pluxes not venous pluxes capillary pluxes and then lastly the important uh, may not be very important okay but at least some is there venous blood pressure though it is minimum okay as i said that hardly any pressure remains in the vein which is responsible for the venous blood venous blood to flow in the in anti gravity direction in the anti gravity so you have understood the six different important factors which are responsible for the venous return against many arts and arts was the most important all was that the blood has to flow into the anti gravity direction and why in anti gravity direction in human beings because we are erectile persons we are not like quadrupeds are not reptilians okay where venous drainage must be very efficient we are standing okay and because of standing and heart is a much at a higher level okay and this is uh, uh, the i mean to say difficulty because of the erect posture because our posture because we are the only uh, person in animal kingdom which can walk on our two feet okay we are erect okay we are and that's why our hands are free to do the manipulative work because we are erect and that's why we are intelligent i mean say not intelligent we are doing the manipulative work because of our hand and that's why we are ruling over the other animals okay and this is then the price we are paying in the form of some time this veins become inefficient in the drainage okay and when they are not draining the blood efficiently because of the irregularity is of the valves okay then the blood is start pooling inside the veins which are mostly present in the leg our leg and you must have seen some people with the dilated veins okay especially washer men okay who are standing for hours together okay and washing the cloth okay or the other people who are working in the factories standing for many hours okay at one place okay so there the venous return is poor and this result into the varicosities of vein okay dilated tortuous vein i hope you have understood both the aspect uh, of this lecture that is formation of the portal vein and this is the factors responsible for the venous return thank you